Let's meet our comedians. We've got Allison Luyan, <laughs> Jasmine Towers, Alex Hobson, Aaron Hazelhurst, <laughs> Stefan Mang, <laughs> Ian McKenzie. <laughs> I'm your host, Jordan Simon. Uh, we're gonna play a game called Fact or Fib. Uh, Aaron, let's begin with you. Oh, okay. Nice seal. <laughs> <laughs> I once kept a pet in my high school locker. <laughs> what animal was it? A spider. In fact, a tarantula. Loose in the locker or in a terrarium? That's ridiculous. Um, <laughs> her name was Sid Vicious, and she was in her little cage, not a cage, like a container. You know spiders, you locker. use the word terrarium. I'm impressed. I had creepy pets too. <laughs> oh. Of course you Sid. did. <laughs> How long did the spider survive in a dark locker? Uh, it's, I left it there for about a week before I realized I don't like to own a tarantula, so I gave it <laughs> to my friend's brother. And he loved it, but he took it home. I didn't want to take it home, because How did spiders. you acquire a tarantula? They were sell, sold at my local pet store. When you had it at school, did you take it out and freak other kids out with it? No, that's rude. So it was uh, a secret I, spider. Well, no, people would just hang out at my locker and they'd be like, sup, Aaron? And I'd be like, Sid's up, because he's in the top shelf. And, and I could have taken him out, or her, it was a she, taken her out, but truthfully, she terrified me. I just was trying to be cool. <laughs> How much yeah. did it cost? $20. Good question. What grade were you in? Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, I think it was in grade 11 or 12. Oh, I didn't see that coming. This okay. sounds like an expensive tarantula for the time period. Maybe somebody tried to scam me. I'm hoping you just brought, Allison, a price graph I know of spiders throughout time. for tarantulas. <laughs> Do not full of details on this. I, I'm telling you, this is not a uh, tarantula-loving woman. No, 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 no. I believe she doesn't like tarantulas because that's why she got rid of it. It exactly. was the, it was the play being cool. And because keep it you're in trying to be cool. That's the only part that makes sense. You're more convincing than she is. I, I don't, I don't <laughs> mind. I, I, don't I, mind. I, I wasn't cool. So I thought this tarantula would be... And I was going through a Sid and Nancy phase. So Sid I and Nancy? That was my other question. Why isn't it Nancy Spungen? But I okay. read... The book, there was a book about what? Sid and Nancy. It could have been Nancy Spungen. That would have been better. That would have been a better detail. That would not have been de better, because <laughs> I like the Sex Pistols. I listened to one of their songs. And so therefore, I liked all of the songs. <laughs> so it was a lady tarantula named Sid Vicious. Correct. Okay. So Sid Vicious is the name of a musical artist. <laughs> Yes. Is it? You have to leave that in the episode. You <laughs> cannot edit that out. <laughs> I honestly thought you came up with that, and I thought, that is such a cool name. <laughs> it, but It uh, is a cool oh. name. Yeah. 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 Lead singer okay. of the Sex Pistols. And I also know what we're talking Basis. about. <laughs> Basis, Johnny Rotten is the lead singer. All right, we'll leave all that right, in right. for right. you. Damn it. <laughs> New facts I have He's to right. re-ram in my brain. <laughs> Yeah, I don't but know. I'm ready to vote. I'm ready to vote. I, 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 ready to vote. I do just, not dislike I'm this person. I'm just beginning to understand this. Even when she lies in my face. <laughs> I'm with you, Alex. Are you doing a fib? fib? You're doing a fib. Doing a fib. I'm doing real name. Who? Real person. A Going to the green, Jasmine. I don't know it. what you guys think of me, but um, it happened. <laughs> 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 I'm so happy that was true. <laughs> I think it makes you cool. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Wait, so it wasn't a terrarium? Uh, no, no, it was actually, yeah, no, a little okay, whatever Okay, because I thought, because you know how lockers had the little top shelf? Yeah, I was like, yeah, maybe it was it's in there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. But yeah. that's where the thing was. Oh, okay. But, and this is a side note story. I actually took it out to hold it once, and I thought, oh, my God, she's so cute. And she jumped out of my hand, and I, like, freaked. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and that was it. The had to go. Phase. Yeah. You should have told that part. Yeah. <laughs> but should I have? Yeah. You are up, Alex. Oh, excellent. 
I was once part of an entire class going missing. Cool. I was. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. was once part. How long ago was this? This is elementary school. Elementary school in the 70s, the yes, indeed. The entire class of elementary school children went missing. Missing. How did that come to be? Uh, they were there, <laughs> then they were gone. <laughs> we had a substitute teacher, so a teacher on call, and she let us out for lunch. That was a mistake. <laughs> we, and we did not come back. You just wandered off into you the wilderness. You never played that a was... joke on a substitute teacher. <laughs> so you're going to have to expand on this. You played a, a joke on your substitute teacher, and that went You in the plural sense. And yes. you, got, you went missing. Yes. But you were part of the class? Yes. So you knew where you were? Yes. We, we, <laughs> we were not in, in some... Uh, unexplained void from science fiction. <laughs> we knew where we were. How long but, were you uh, gone for? Ooh, I think less than an hour. Hmm. Oh, I was kind of hoping time was moves, days. Time moves differently in the void, but I'm <laughs> right. gonna go with uh, less than an hour. And did you all just go to the same place together? Did you all scatter into your own little, wherever you wanted to go, or? It was a group decision. So it was like, like a coordinated a, ghosting of your as substitute coordinated teacher. as elementary school children get. <laughs> yes. I, say, I think it was just a great exercise in democracy. That everybody was <laughs> easily like able to make a collective decision. Where did you go? Basically to a far part of the, of the school field. The school property was large, extensive, so we... This we is sounding a lot less like you went missing and you just got, went out for recess <laughs> <laughs> on any given day. <laughs> Did you maybe perhaps think that you had fooled the substitute teacher <laughs> to a larger degree? And then than when you the bell rang, did. we came back saying, <laughs> "We're so sneaky." <laughs> no, no, search search parties were sent. There was uh, definite confusion. This was not a disagreement about the length of lunch hour. This was an entire class. So, so was it like this. police searching for you, search and rescue? Like, what kind of organized? Like, was it just the school administration? It might have been, but I don't think so. I believe it was just that other classes were sent out under the instruction of teachers. <laughs> Otherwise, we would have taken them in right. through, the, <laughs> through the power of democracy. Swallowed them into your Through void. the power of democracy. <laughs> so to be clear, the school solution to missing children was to send out m more children. <laughs> <laughs> sending them out. Eh, those ones didn't I come back. Know. Send <laughs> some more. If you've ever read the procedures for school boards, but that, yes, that's, uh, they consider them expendable. <laughs> they're, they're in the children. staff room going, let us know. Let us know. <laughs> right, children the renewable resource. Very true. Yeah. I'm ready to vote. Yeah, I'm <laughs> ready to vote, yeah. It feels so real, but um, I'm, I'm gonna go the other way. Oh yeah, see, I'm thinking, considering the children were basically just at the edge of the fence, <laughs> I'm gonna say fact. <laughs> yeah, I, I think given the uh, negligence of the how they respond to missing children <laughs> in the 70s, I'm gonna go with fact as well, yeah. All right. right, that means green team does go fact. We've got two against one. Edge of a fence, nothing. We were gone. We were gone. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We were gone. <laughs> Point to the green team, gold star. Gold star, team effort. Good team effort. Uh, Stefan, we're gonna go to you next. All right, all right. Well, that's great. I'm glad you said that, Jordan, because I've got something important got I'd like to say. I once broke my finger trying to work a finger puppet. <laughs> uh, this sounds like an excuse after the fact. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, Finger puppets require more directions than you would assume. <laughs> it, you don't just stick your finger into the finger puppet. No. Okay. Here's the thing: it wasn't. It wasn't just like a finger puppet. This was okay. like an antique finger puppet. <laughs> so like. So a finger. What's that? <laughs> right back in the day. I just tried to bend my. It snapped. Yes. <laughs> so we were on a road trip. Uh, out to the Atlantic provinces, and of course, you know, my mom and my dad, we stop in every antique shop along the way, and you know, there's so few things for a child to do in an antique shop, and they try to like contain you. <laughs> so this one had finger puppets, and I was like, 
begging my parents to buy it for me. And it was like, I think expensive and it was ugly and hideous. It was like one of those red haired sort of like, I don't know, servant people or something. So <laughs> they finally paid, decided to get it for me. And through the rest of the trip, I was just in the back doing finger puppets. And then all of a sudden I just started screaming. My dad had to pull the car over at the, like, on the side of the road, like one wheel almost in the ditch. And they looked back at me and there was, I kid you not, I kid you not, a trickle of blood coming oh. out of this finger puppet. And <laughs> they actually had to break it off of my finger, yeah. A finger puppet, where's, where's the danger? Isn't he felt? What, what material it, is the finger puppet? Metal. There was a yeah. metal tube inside the finger puppet that I guess kind of like had a hinge on it. And the oh. hinge, I guess, just had like a jagged Hardcore. piece of metal I on it. I take my aspersions back. They had to break that, it off. Yeah, they is didn't that what rip broke your finger? No, it was like the metal like went into the bone. I guess it was called like a fracture. Show us the scar. Can you see that right there? Yeah. Can confirm. Yeah, can you see that? So you're on the side of the road, blood, pain, screaming, unhappiness. What happens next? We just drove back to the hotel. That was it. I don't remember. I was a kid. Later, we went to the hospital. Oh, you did go to a hospital? After the hotel. You asked me what my parents did right away. That's they took us to the, the hotel. How old were you? Yeah, I was about eight. What are you thinking, Allison? Seeing that he showed us the scar, I'm going to say that that is true. Hope for Stefan's sake <laughs> that this is a fib. That's my vote. Well, obviously, that is not true. Gold star to Stefan for pulling us. I would like to thank Ian for confirming the lack of a scar. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that was a nod. team effort. I saw, yeah. All right, this team's cohesive. We've got to be careful of them. <laughs> Jasmine, oh. you are up. It starts now. Now is when we get, I don't know what, I'm issuing threats just in the general <laughs> direction. <laughs> I once broke up with someone by cutting their scarf into dozens of tiny pieces, packaging it up, and sending it to them. <laughs> <laughs> now I assume this is a scarf of particular meaning to either you and or this person. It was their scarf. Mm -hmm. I do remember packaging it up in um, the only little box I had, which was a finesse hairspray box. And so uh, a scarf disassembled fits quite well into a hairspray box. Probably any brand would do, um, <laughs> but yeah. Just, I mean, if you could just help me walk down the path of what message were you trying to convey with the scarf cutting? Because to me, I think it's poetic. You know, that message, like a, with a, you know, that message. Like that a, is poetic. I wouldn't even that is poetic. see you to your face message. Okay. And also the thing you gave me, or that I borrowed, or I don't know, somehow was in my position. Mm -hmm. I so don't like you. It's coming, I don't even want it in my presence, and neither should it be whole. Is what I'm guessing, I thought. <laughs> the premise here is that you cut up the scarf to end the relationship. This was your message, we're done. Yes. Yeah, what did he do to warrant this? <laughs> he was a jerk. Uh, what did he do? Well, he looked funny. That was a problem. It's and um, <laughs> Like, this scarf won't make him look any better. <laughs> no. Did you actually like go through the effort of like buying postage and m no. finding his address and mailing it to him? No, or? no, no. This is Mary. Like, so uh, you just... The friend, mm. Nicole, oh, she I delivered see. it to him. And I since found out years later that he named his dog Jasmine. So that was his revenge. I was a chocolate lab, apparently. <laughs> and this was like years later. His but revenge was to have to think about you for the entire dog's <laughs> lifespan. I don't know. I and like do chores to feed it and pick up its poo. Maybe Take he really Jasmine liked me after vet. all. Uh, <laughs> sounds like he misses you, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. I think he knows he made a mistake. You, yeah. you really oh, sent I a good message there. So it was a, he loves that dog, drives him around. His <laughs> dog's got this little jaunty scarf. It's That's right, <laughs> every Christmas he buys the dog a scarf. <laughs> what are we thinking, green team? I, I didn't even need to hear any additional detail. Just what that said, it's like, I know that that is 100% Jasmine, <laughs> for sure. You saw what I did to that seal. You know I do it to a <laughs> yeah. scarf. I don't know. There was just a, there was a, a je ne sais quoi of 
just untruth. Something didn't oh, feel I, right. I'm gonna say fib. Aaron, I'm, you're left with the deciding vote. I'm again. following my fearless leader. You liar. <laughs> oh. Kevin, I still remember you. <laughs> <laughs> and he named his dog Jasmine? Uh, he did. Oh my god, oh. Kevin. <laughs> Come on. She's, she's ripping the done to her. Kevin. That's hilarious. She's Kevin's just fine. <laughs> Ian, you are up next. Oh, all right. When I was a teen, I got stuck in a playhouse and it had to be taken apart to get me out. What material was this playset made out of? So it's, it was kind of like a weird thing. Back when there was um, video rental stores, there's this one place in my town called Main Event and in the back there was this big playhouse area and inside the playhouse area there was these two big balls a, like almost like exercise balls and nobody really watched it so like my friend and I we we would like try to like shove the balls through the openings to get them out but they were big enough that they couldn't get out but we didn't let that stop us so <laughs> we got both of the balls just stuck sufficiently to the point where not only could we not move them but none of the adults could get them out either you're sure this was a play place for children <laughs> Well, like I said, it was in the 90s, so kind of like of a video. the 70s, less supervision <laughs> happening. So you cr what, crawled in head first? How'd you get stuck? There's like two big balls and, and you could just, we were just trying to shove one out through the only entrance in there. So you plugged up your only exit. Yeah. And just yeah. got trapped. Yeah, we were determined to get it out of the exit. What part of you was stuck? I don't know if I'm clear on that. Like, was it your arm? Was it your chest? No, was like it we your... were trapped inside of it. Okay, you were fully in and yeah. couldn't. Two children. Get yeah. it trapped yeah. inside. Yeah. And how did you call for help? Um, well, we didn't, but eventually an adult <laughs> walked by. And Why would you? You made a out. fort. <laughs> yeah. sign, no girls we were, yeah, we were just still trying to get it out of the thing. And then some adults walked by and, and they, they saw that there were a couple of kids trying to do something they shouldn't. And they probably like told the store staff and the store staff tried to push it back in and then they couldn't. How did they take it apart? Like There's just sort of like netting on the front part of it. Okay. And they just kind of like unscrewed the thing and just took the netting down. How old were you? Yeah, good question. Uh, so this was when I was living in uh, Wyoming in the States, probably like nine or 10. Okay. This sounds plausible to me. What do you think? Wyoming, I'm... Wyoming trapped in netting. Yeah, <laughs> actually, this, this works. We're all saying Ooh. true on this. I made all of that up <laughs> at, outside of the main event. That was an actual place. I, I just <laughs> used that yeah. to feed my life. Yeah. Gold star again to the green team. Oh, yeah, impressive lying. <laughs> <laughs> Allison, we go to you next. I went to a training to be a model summer camp. Why? <laughs> no. Excuse me. <laughs> no, I mean, it's not, not, not obvious. No. <laughs> Obviously, you're stunning, and I'm sure you have them. But why would you want to, is my question. I was pretty young, and I was flattered by the invitation. Fair. Oh, you were invited. Mm hmm. How does the invitation process work? Uh, so you will be walking along the street and somebody will stop you and say, hey, you look nice. Are they driving a windowless van? We're running a camp. Nope. Uh, it was a female. She looked friendly. She looked legit. She had a card and she said, would you like to come to this? Uh, camp, I think you'd be a great fit. We work with models and we send people on auditions for commercials and things. Did you ever get an audition after that? Um, I did, but it was working as a uh, waitress in a uh, poker room. <laughs> and so I started to think that the modeling camp might not be legitimate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So take us through the details of a modeling camp. First of all, where is the camp? This was when I lived in Toronto. Mm. 
it's all sounding so plausible now. Yes. <laughs> yes. And I got uh, put in touch with a casting panel similar to this, and you walk in and you read some stuff for them. It wasn't like summer camp where I go and stay in a cabin. It was uh, basically you spend the summer going to do uh, reads and walking and photo shoots and getting headshots, and you, you pay them with the promise that hopefully they will um, get you some gigs, and then you will make that money back. Hmm. Hmm. You paid to go walk at camp? I paid to be a part of this camp after I was told that I was beautiful. You are beautiful. <laughs> You are. <laughs> <laughs> and now she has stories that start off with this one time at model camp. Exactly. <laughs> How that. old were you? 19. Oh. oh, so you didn't need to ask your parents' permission to go off to mystery van model camp. I did not need to ask permission to fall for modeling camp ruses, no. <laughs> did, did you tell anyone you were going to model camp? Uh, yeah, I told some friends. And then they're like, are you... Sure, that's a real thing. Uh, the lady that invited me at the time when I was walking down the street, I was wearing high heels and I was having a very confident day. So uh, I might have looked more like a model than I did maybe without the heels on. She's very statuesque, I will say that. And for that, I will say fact. I would invite you to model camp. I don't have one. But that <laughs> didn't seem to stop those guys. So. Did you invite me to model camp? Yes. Say yes. <laughs> say yes. He's our host. Of course I would. You have to say yes. I have to. Yeah. You're right. pretty, too. I believe that you would accept a roadside invitation to model camp. <laughs> so I'm going to say yes, fact. Yeah. The poker thing is what got it for me, because I know that when you hire for a waitress, you can discriminate on looks if you hire them as a model. So that's fact. I will let you know that it is not true. Oh! 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 team. I'm making a comeback. Hey, it's I my turn. It's you. Oh, it is. Right. It's me. He wouldn't lie to us. I would not. Unless the lie. I have been frightened of E.T. ever since I first watched the movie. Yeah, that's a terrifying movie. This is yeah. entirely plausible. How old were you when you. You're, Wait, now, Jordan, for the audience, what year were you born? <laughs> oh, oh, you want to hear about the year I was yeah, born? Yeah, <laughs> E.T., I believe, was released in 1982. Yes. Right. And the and year I was born, born starts with a two. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we've heard enough. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what age, then? You, so you had, your parents had to go out and get you E.T. to show it to you. Oh, I'm... I'm someone of the new millennium. I can pull up E.T. on the TV <laughs> anytime I want. <laughs> Those crazy kids in their technology. Yeah, kids. <laughs> How did you come to be watching E.T. the first time? Because I rented it from the TV. Oh, you oh. rented it. I rented it. It was, it was like a... And it was direct you, TV. I don't know if the wireless provider card. is important. Is that <laughs> oh, no, it's an account. We're logged in. Kids buy things all the time. Okay. Okay. And how old were you when you saw it for the first time? About six. What? And Kids were you... don't rent stuff what? on their own at six. This is a movie about children hiding the first maroon <laughs> extraterrestrial. And you're all like, you watch something on TV? Every movie, <laughs> every movie from the 80s is like, look what the kids did all by themselves. <laughs> don't listen to Stefan. Since a very young age, Stefan has been scared of fingers. <laughs> Gary's over to ET. Were you watching with like a sibling or a friend or just by yourself? Yeah. There was, uh, there was a friend <laughs> over. Um, yes to all of those yes different to, options. Yes to all of it. Uh, no, I think the responsible adults pulled up a selection of movies, a pre-selected, you know, stuff that's not supposed to be scary, mm. but it was, and we chose E.T. Jordan, what part of the movie terrified you? Mm. Yeah. The closet. 
when, he, when he's like, I'm E.T. <laughs> he doesn't say that. But <laughs> that <laughs> that's what I feel when he emerges from that, when he's hiding yeah. in the kids' bedroom. Okay, that's, that is very freaky. That yeah. is bar none, the freakiest part of that show. Uh-huh. And I was so little that like once I saw it, I just remembered it scarier than it was. I feel really embarrassed that I am connecting with the feeling of fear. <laughs> because that, that, like, yeah, you're right. Like, we have all these inanimate objects. They're all posed, you know, but then there's always that feeling, like, oh, is one going to move? Is there, yeah. what's there? With, it's visceral. So have you only seen this movie one time? Oh, I've since gotten over it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but it was, it was, it was like a thing. It was, for a while, I wouldn't, I remembered it scarier than it was because I was so young when I watched it that... They, like any time it was suggested, I was like, no, we can't watch E.T. I was probably 13, 14 before I watched it again. Could you reread the original statement? <laughs> no, no, please. <laughs> Out loud for everyone, Jordan. I'm ready to vote on this I've been frightened of E.T. ever since I first uh, watched the movie. Uh, <laughs> ever since. Okay, day. so you have to remember things. <laughs> <laughs> like the whole sentence? <laughs> That's ridiculous. It's a long oh sentence. Oh my god. Oh. Yeah. I, now I gotta tell you, oh. I too was gun. terrified of E.T., so I was ready to say I, fact. Mm -hmm. But now I'm wow. firmly in the fib camp. What if That's it's true? What if it's true? We know it. What if it is? <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? I could. <laughs> No. <laughs> oh. This is this is why I'm the host. So I can do this less. <laughs> We're moving on to the Book of Truths. Ooh. Ooh. Book of Truths. All right, the Book of Truths. In this book are six different truths. Uh, I'm going to pull one. It is true for one of the comedians here. I get two questions per person, and I have to try to guess who. I have gotten one right so far. <laughs> it was glorious, Jordan. Yeah. This truth says, the strangest thing I've seen in Kelowna is adult tantrums. I have seen more adult tantrums in Kelowna than my whole life of seeing child tantrums. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna need to hear some backstories. If you had to guesstimate a, a kind of scoreboard, what would you say is like number of adult tantrums you've seen in Kelowna to number of child tantrums you've seen ever? You asking me? Yes. Answer now? Yes. Well, that's two questions. Okay. <laughs> what do we do? That took a full 20 seconds to sink in. <laughs> Found a loophole. <laughs> I'm not mad about it. No, you gotta admire it, I suppose. Same question to you, because I thought it was a really creative yes, question. That is a great question. I've seen at least. 20 adult tantrums in the last four years, so that's averaging five a year. And child tantrums, I see 20 in 10 years. One is two per year, and, and Kelowna averages five per year. Okay. Is there a common theme of the tantrums? Yes. It is generally over 4 p.m. at night on summer. They're dehydrated, they didn't think it would be this hot, they weren't prepared, maybe they spent more money than they meant. I don't know the combination of things that happen, but it comes down on the corner of Pandozi and Harvey. I'm hung up on 4 p.m. at night. <laughs> <laughs> what time do you go to bed? <laughs> and they're on the rise, these adult tantrums. On the weekends, that seems to be the, um, the tantrum <laughs> spikes okay. during the week. What are the tantrums usually about? Uh, they usually are alcohol-induced. Okay. Um, and usually um, after 4 p.m. <laughs> I'm sorry, liar. 4 p.m. at night. At, <laughs> at night. Um, you know when, 10 p.m. at day. <laughs> 10 p.m. at day. When the OK Chardonnays are kicking in and people are getting tantrum-y. And what level of ruckusness constitutes a tantrum? Ooh, what level? Yeah. What, are we like, like pie five. chart? Or what would you like, <laughs> what? Like amount of, of behavioral 
excessiveness, you live outburstiness. Here. You know, it's it's very. I've seen a normal amount of adult tantrums. <laughs> <laughs> you all living here. She's baiting so... him into it. He's like, just answer the question. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, well, I mean, the, how, the level of ruckusness. Um, it's a good word. Like it here. Is. I, that's a like great yelling? word. Oh, yelling. Oh, yelling. Okay, so yes. yelling's a requirement. Yes. Okay. It's I, not. It's not just giving each other the stink eye. That's not a tantrum. It's no, but it's not like muttering. That's no, not a tantrum. No, it's not muttering. Okay. Okay. It's beyond muttering, but it's you. It's definitely a raised okay. voice. I'm just trying to catch you in a lie. That's I, all. I, I, <laughs> I am, think you're not gonna. <laughs> I just have to say, I desperately want to now scientificify it. <laughs> the right word? Uh, to word. know what is the unit of measurement of recklessness? How can you measure? It goes on the Richter scale. Yes. Oh. The Richter scale. <laughs> <laughs> recklessness is what happens. Scientifically, you, mu- you. you measure okay, I the ruckusosity. Think- That's right. what you actually measure. Are right. we a PhD program? <laughs> <laughs> Did you see adult tantrums before you moved to Kelowna? I mean, before I came moved to Kelowna, you might see like drunken people at a bar. In Kelowna, I have seen sober adults just losing it on each other in just broad daylight. Like, what percentage of the tantrums are sober tantrums? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? I'm really like blood alcohol testing these people. I'm just <laughs> watching you can it. Tell. I'm just watching it from across a parking lot. Was it at 4 p.m. at day <laughs> or 4 p.m. at night? <laughs> That's yes. <laughs> what have we learned about asking questions, Jordan? <laughs> that I'm limited. I had so many details to share that will never come we'll to never the light know. of day. Really? Or the light of night, as it were. <laughs> Does this bother you, or is it more amusing when you witness these? I think it's almost m- maybe a bit of confirmation bias, because when I first got here, I, I just was miserable and I just, being in my misery, I noticed all of the other miserable people and I was like, oh, this is good. Everyone else hates this town too. And so. <laughs> so you told each other off. <laughs> I was just like, oh yeah, no, this is, this, I'm, I'm, I felt like sort of affirmed in my resentment, <laughs> really I guess. Really painting the city in a beautiful way. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Is there anything else you'd like to add as a follow-up? <laughs> I do he like Kelowna now. <laughs> and then he comes here and he's just like, I hate the wine and sunshine. <laughs> What's your favorite color? <laughs> the teal of That's the... a tantrum-y color. <laughs> now, who am I going to choose? I'm gonna go Aaron on this one. Well, you are so... Wrong. <laughs> Who's it gonna be? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he did say teal. He did say he teal. Did say teal. <laughs> all right, all right. Now we are going to play punchlines. Uh, so traditionally, a joke has both a setup and a punchline, but our comedians today will only be getting the punchline and have to think of the setup. Our first punchline today is, I couldn't even finish the whole thing. I began to have an idea for this premise. <laughs> <laughs> even finish the whole thing. <laughs> I was supposed to tell this lie earlier, but I couldn't even finish the whole thing. (laughs) The punchline is, thanks, mom. (laughs) Now that I'm in my 30s, I just randomly comment on mundane things that I see, and it's really annoying. Thanks, mom. (laughs) People always seem weirded out when I tell them I was born in the year 2000. Thanks, mom. This is my face. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to our improv round. We've got a couple of improv games for you today. 
Uh, the first one is our scene onion. It's an onion made out of scenes because it's got layers. So two people will step in, start doing a scene. Uh, when a new person joins, it's a brand new scene. We're gonna build it up until we're all part of the onion and peel it back down. We do need a suggestion from the audience of something your grandparents did for work. Cutting hair. So what are we thinking today? Because I'm feeling curls. Curls. It needs to be put more of her hip closer to the to the, to the floor. Just I just read the Am manual. Am I too late for the can-can practice? Are we? Here we go. This? We're starting left leg up. Uh, okay. I right. just keep like noise. Up. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Hands down looks a oh. bit salute-ish. <laughs> <laughs> All right, is this where we're just kicking the children? Is this where we yeah. come? Yeah. Just, yeah. All right, here's a little kick and circle. Here, okay. In a, yep. in a, yeah. Okay. All right. Here we, look at oh, 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 the oh, Look at that one. Look at that one. That one is rolling. Mm. I can't Whoa. even see the bottom. Someone dropped something down it. Oh, wow. It's at least seven or eight feet. Put your face <laughs> in hard to tell. Oh, seat. it's five feet. Oh, it's from my face. I love it oh, when just, everyone's just right. randomly squatting around me in the park. It makes me feel tall, finally. Yes. Oh, wow, you are. Like wow. a king. Oh, I know, no one ever oh, notices. Sir. What are you, like seven foot five? Oh, seven foot five. <laughs> you know, what they don't tell you is five foot eight is actually very tall. <laughs> oh, in that oh my goodness, it's on this rock. Oh. From the edge. Yeah, don't, 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 don't jump, don't count. jump. We is, are in a are you sure? So how tall was the guy? Like seven foot nine? He should have chucked this, but if he's gone, I guess I'll have to. Yep, it was much deeper than seven feet. <laughs> yeah. That was at least 100 feet. <laughs> come right. on, there no, are kids to there's kids, kids oh, to kick. Oh, yes, here. come yeah. on. Yeah. Oh, to my goodness. Oh, yes, my don't worry, God. they deserve it. They're <laughs> terrible children. They're God, terrible children. They're just oh, awful. my leg. I'm sorry, I gotta go. Right. This the time, right. everybody okay. arms okay. down. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. That was bad. Yeah. That was bad. I didn't like that. This is so hard. Oh, yoga. So, yeah, you just gotta... I you did know, watch the YouTube. Like I was saying, maybe a little more bounce. Mm. And let me go get some tone. I'll be right back. Uh -huh. <laughs> Fancy. Yeah. That was our scene onion. Uh, our next game is called Invisible Props. Um, we need a suggestion from the audience of any object at all. Playing cards, shovel, eyeglasses. Oh. Hey, 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 Jack. Oh. Jack, it's me, Queen. Oh, hey, yeah. <laughs> you look like we're gonna get out of here? I don't know, but you are looking good today, Queen. Oh, I just wanted to say. Same to you, Jack. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Where's King? Oh, sh oh, oh, let's get out of oh. here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I said I'd do the show, but now I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> And <laughs> oh. oh. I... You've been who I've been dating this whole time? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Our last game of the day is our orchestrated story. Uh, it's going to be a story told by our team, and I will be the conductor. Um, so they're gonna tell a story. When I point to them, they're gonna start talking, and when I switch to someone else, they're gonna pick up right where the other person left off, mid-sentence. Um, can I get a suggestion of anything at all that isn't food? Hugs. Pugs or hugs? Pugs. Hugging pugs. <laughs> <laughs> this will be the best story you've ever heard about pugs that hug. Once upon a time, I really wanted a pug. And I wanted a hug at the same time, so I so I just gave it the biggest, squishiest hug I could ever. And my mom said you're not allowed to have a pug because you hug things too hard and you squish them. Look at him, you hugged his face, flat, completely flat. His eyes are popping out, oh no. And now you can only have five more dogs after this dog. And that's not counting the other three you lost. And you still can still have those five. Because that's Snoopy. And Jerry. And Samson, and you squish them all. I think we should get you a different kind of pet. Like a wolf, a dog that hasn't been corrupted. <laughs> yes, yes, one with sharp teeth that will bite your face. And we should also teach you how to hug properly. You're and see. <laughs> <laughs> That's the end of our improv round. Thank you so much to our comedians again for being on the show. We've got Stefan May.
Awesome.